because you can never have too much water. And likewise, you can never have too much coffee. Welcome to Michelle's Life on Repeat. I'm Michelle and I'm in my happy place, my grow room. And this is where I distract myself from my chronic illnesses. If I can keep my hands and my mind busy, I don't always think about the pain or about the situation or my limitations. So this is what I do to take my mind off of chronic illness and to enjoy life to the fullest that I can. I also like to cook, and sometimes you see me in my kitchen whipping up something or another, but basically my channel is about living with chronic illness, doing it as successfully as you can, not giving yourself guilt for not doing all the things your mind wants to do, but enjoying the moments the moments that you make special and to try to always find joy in something in my day. If this is your first time joining me on this channel, welcome. I'm glad you found my, found us. Ooh, I'm speaking in plural. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's just me and the plants and I don't think they're talking back. If this is your first time finding my channel, well, welcome and I'm glad you're here. Take a look around, stay a while, visit some videos I have on fibromyalgia, chronic migraines, orchids, orchids purchases, some cooking, there's a lot going on. And on Chit Chat Sundays, it's usually a combination, is that a word? Combobulation, that's the word, of all of it. And it's usually a, a recap of what happened in my week. And I invite you to just hang out, grab yourself some water, some tea, some coffee, whatever you like. And if you're like me, I'm usually double fisting it, ice water, cause I'm like running on always thirsty with the medicines I take and caffeine because like, yeah, caffeine, it, it's just caffeine. What else can we say? It also helps keep my migraines down. So uh, there's a medicinal purpose in it. And, and I recently learned that it's good for my liver. It helps flush out the toxins. It's a double win, double win. Well, you can, you can. I've had too much before. It makes you feel like, uh. Anyway. Let's begin. Let's get this show on the road. Today I wanted to update you guys on my fibromyalgia journey. Dun, dun, dun. So I wanted to update you on my fibromyalgia journey. About three months back, my pains kind of hit the maximum pain level that they had ever been for me. Uh, I started on this fibromyalgia journey probably 20 years ago, not knowing that it was fibromyalgia. Maybe about 15 years ago, I finally got the diagnosis and for about 12 to 13 years, I was on one medicine that helped tremendously. I didn't need to change it. If anything, I went up one dose on the very minimal dose of it. I don't like to share the names of what I've um, been prescribed because all of our bodies are different. And you and your uh, medical providers, you work on it, you find things that work. I have a list, like I call it my buttload long list of things I'm allergic to, but I also have things I've tried because if you don't try, you don't know. And if you don't try, you don't get reactions. It's a 50-50. And when I'm in a lot of pain, I'm willing to try. I'm willing to try things because I want to live this life that I only get one shot at it. <laughs> I want to live it with some energy, some excitement, and being able to do some of the things on my list of life goals. So anyway, we were on a medicine my pain increased to a point where that medicine was no longer working after 13 years. So my doctor suggested I try one more smidge higher on the dose 
And if that doesn't work, I was back to my rheumatologist to try something completely new. So that's what we did. Went up a little bit more, it worked for a week, and then plateaued out and my body said, no, you're gonna have to suffer with fibromyalgia. And I walked myself over to my rheumatologist and we shuffled the deck. We laid out everything that I was allergic to, everything that I've tried, and we came up with a list of three things. Yeah, three, three things to try. And the first one we thought we'd try uh, looked like it would be safe for me. Excuse me, it looked like it would be safe for me because they had given it to me uh, post-operative when I had had my full and complete hysterectomy back in 2017. So she said, my doctor, since you tried it then, unbeknownst to you that you were trying it, it was just part of the IV solution they gave you while you were medicated in the hospital, and you did not have a reaction to it, let's start with that one. So I'm like, yes. So I started that, um, I'm saying 60 plus, we'll go with maybe 70 days ago. And within two or three days, I felt good again. I really did. My feet did not hurt all the time. My wrists stopped hurting. The aches and the deep bone pains that limit how much I can do and how far I can walk and just the extent of my reach, like my shoulders, I just couldn't keep reaching up to the top shelf here to get the heavier pots down um, that had the larger, taller orchids in them. Those things were eliminated, so I was I was in love with it. The drug worked and then I started getting a smidge more of the pains coming back so we upped it we did start at such a very low dose because i i'm chronically known to react um violently <laughs> to new drugs or any drug my body decides isn't gonna isn't cutting it so we started slow and then in about two weeks we upped it and we were still at a very minimal dose compared to what the average person can take like um, I think I made it to 75 milligrams when some people take daily, you know, 600 milligrams of the medicine. So what was I to do? I was pleased, I was excited. We went up a notch on it and um, things were going great. And then, there's always that and then, isn't there when it comes to medicine? Ah, so the and then moment came I'd say two weeks ago and I started waking up with deep itching all over my body but specifically on my ankles and on my knees and um, when I looked down there was no mosquito bite no spider bites no fleas we don't live near the ocean you know where you get the sand fleas that kind of stuff so uh, I just chalked it up as to fibromyalgia, dry skin, but then I started getting welts. Yeah, you know where this is going, don't you? <laughs> I started getting welts on the ankles and sores and um, the itching was so intense I would draw blood and um, not pretty. And then the welts started showing up on my knees and on my arm and I think I got a couple on my face and the itching, the itching, oh, the itching, the kind of itching that you just, you just like a bear on a wall. I was running around with um, back scratchers and my husband's like, you know it's getting worse, don't you? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Denial. He's like, you're itching, it's getting worse. You need to call the doctors. So I did. We had to stop that medicine. Um, I was I was mad. I was sad. I was glad. <laughs> All at the same time. Very mad like a toddler. Just stomping my feet and think on my Facebook page I had a picture of a little toddler rolling on the floor like in a grocery store just stomping his feet going ah! 
because it was working and I got my life back and I was moving and my goal, remember my goal on my chit chat Sunday to lose 10 pounds because the doctor said I needed to with my uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver. Well, I was down nine pounds. Woo! Yeah. Cut that right in half. Pulled on the brake. I now am not on that medicine. I'm not allowed to be on that medicine until I see her again and find out what's going on. The itching has stopped. I still have welts in the same original places on my body, but when I brush my hand across them, they don't trigger an, an itch. So I am glad that we caught it in time because people who have violent reactions to medicine also have the possibility of something called Stevens Johnson syndrome. And that's where your body starts from the inside to the outside with the reaction to medicines or reaction to your own um, immune system. And it starts on the inside as if it were burning. And when it finally gets to the outside, you form welts, blisters, and it's very um, painful looking. Uh, your skin begins to fall off as if you were a burn patient. And they treat you with for Stevens Johnson syndrome with a, a long list of medicines, but you're generally uh, hospitalized if it gets bad enough and you're in the burn unit. And you can look up pictures of that. It's pretty graphic before worn. I'm thankful I didn't get to that stage. Would I? Had I stayed on the medicine? I don't know. But I know enough about my body to know that something wasn't right. And so that's what I encourage you to do. Remember, try new things if you can and the doctor allows it, but watch. You know your body better than anyone else. And for me, I was mad that I had to stop it. I was glad that I stopped it in time and I didn't progress to a worse state of possibly getting the Stevens Johnson syndrome. But now I'm sad because in my mind, I think I've tried everything. This is what I have to live with. I'm stuck with it. Deal with it. Suck it up, buttercup. And I don't like that attitude. I don't like it in myself. I don't like it when a medical professional says it to me. Well, they never say it that bluntly. But it's reality because you can't do what you want to do the way you know how to do it. And just having 60 days of energy again, of walking and doing, getting my 5,000 steps in in a day because there was no migraines going on at this time, which was the second great caveat to this medicine. I went 14 days with no migraine, 14 long days with no migraine. And that is phenomenal for me, phenomenal. I'm normally a 20, 16 to 22, migraine days a month person, which gives you lots of bedtime. So to get to 5,000 steps is pretty hard, but I was, I was hitting it. I was getting those 5,000 steps and proud of myself. And then, and then, and then you slow down again and that was just a week ago. I, so I am on my two and a half weeks post having to stop that medicine. And I have gained back six of those pounds. So it's not an issue of weight. But sorry, it, if I make it sound like it is not at all. I've never been concerned with weight. You either have it or you don't have it. You either work on it or you don't work on it. That's just my personality. Uh, but the doctor had asked me to try to lose some weight and to exercise more because my liver was responding poorly. So anyway, back up on the treadmill, I will start again and I will do what I can do and getting to 5,000 steps is very painful 
and very hard, so I don't think I can do that every day anymore. 2000, we did sneak in a miniature vacation for our anniversary at the beach, and it was lovely. It was beautiful. I did spend a lot of the time in bed, but from the bed I could see the ocean and hear the ocean, so that was medicinal and I am thankful and I as I preach to you guys I found the joy I found the beauty and now I am back home in my beautiful space of my orchids and I feel renewed I feel hopeful but I also feel in pain and that yeah is not a feeling but if you press on and I encourage you to press on yourself if you're struggling with fibromyalgia today I'm with you I'm with you and um, drop me a note down below in the comments and I will say a prayer for you I will remember you in my thoughts and uh, whatever you're struggling with it may not be fibromyalgia it may be Crohn's disease it may be uh, anxiety depression it, the, the list goes on and on. I don't think there's a human being on the earth that isn't suffering with something right now. Think about it. We all wish we had some other body that was perfect or uh, pain-free or didn't have this ailment. But think about it. Everybody out there is struggling with something. And you have a choice to do the best that you can with what you are given. And I'm given this body and I want to do the best that I can. So today on my list of things to do, it is actually Halloween day, the 31st of October, when I am filming this. And I have five beautiful little friends. I mentioned them the other day. And I don't mean little as in little orchid friends, but little real people. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm making five Halloween bags for and um, instead of them coming trick-or-treating at my house I'm gonna go trick-or-treat to them at their house and drop off some goodies and that will make me happy to see them to get the to get a little uh, mask involved COVID hug <laughs> for the times that we're in will pick up my soul and make me happy but uh, you find the joy of what you can do today if it is uh, 500 steps, you go for it. If it's only 300, you did 300. Good job. And um, today also I am going to try to make some more video vlogs, trying to put some more things together, work on my beautiful orchids back here. They bring me joy and delight and it was a pleasure to come back to them. They don't talk back. They don't sass. <laughs> they just sit there and look pretty. Well, I thank you for joining me today. Remember not to give up. Remember to drop a comment down below on what you're struggling with. And I'll be glad, I really will be glad to add you to my list of thoughts. And from here, we can only go up, right? So let's keep pushing on, guys. Until we talk again, bye-bye.